seminar you can give exam so that this is a great opportunity for the students who does not have center in their own country like bangladesh uh, so uh, i feel that uh, this is the high time we should uh, prepare for our mrcpch theory exams uh, like um, part 1 and akp seminar you can give okay so uh, i'm going to start soon uh, my discussion and dr tahir is with me uh, he will be uh, also uh, as a part of as a part of as a part of as a part of in our teaching panel so i'd like to give a small introduction and dr tahir will give afterwards i am many of you know me already my students are here so many of you already know me but the people who does not know me uh, i am dr tamanna i am consultant in pediatrics for last 9 uh, years and uh, i'm currently working in bangladesh in a teaching hospital but uh, uh, soon i am planning to move uh, to uk so uh, i did my mrcpch part 1 and part 2 in 2020 since then i am doing teaching for part 1 and now i'm starting also akp with dr tahir is with me okay so okay just mute so um this is our lecture today about uh, akp discussion um, because uh, many students uh, actually uh, they message me every day uh, that um, akp uh, syllabus they don't understand so what should be the syllabus and uh, how to prepare in a short time okay and also um where they will collect the materials and uh, if they need any course some students are uh, they have long clinical gap or some students are very new like they just passed mbbs so these two groups of students they have actually they are detached from the clinical setting so they would like to join my classes and anyone who want to join the classes most welcome and uh, even if you don't join my classes no problem there are some groups of mine that is free groups you can join and you can discuss the preparation also you can share your materials uh, with each other okay and these books are available in india bangladesh pakistan uh, in book stores okay sri lanka nepal every country egypt sudan they are all available okay i have students from many countries in the world like uae saudi arabia and also nepal india bangladesh pakistan so you can collect these books from your nearest book store they are available but uh, soft copies are also available though it is not Uh, justified to distribute the soft copies without the permission of the author uh, but actually we are students so we do help each other so i think this is pardonable for us but you, if you want you can uh, buy the main copies from your nearest book store and um, uh, regarding the um, why we are here what what is our discussion let us start our uh, first discussion see uh, uh, i got some uh, messages or calls uh, some students uh, frequently ask me madam what should be the best uh, exam for me is it uh, you know, plab or mrcpch i'm only talking about pediatrics okay i am not talking about any other specialty because i am a pediatrician so uh, plab versus mrcpch uh, why we will choose mrcpch see i don't uh, disagree that plab is a easy exam is an easy exam so you can start plab you can start plab if you want to move uk uh, very quickly like uh, within one year if you want to move uk you can go for plab exam but my suggestion is even if you go by via the plab route uh within few years one or two years you will be under training of pediatric specialty and then and then you have to pass mrcpch to go under st3 level or st4 level so why you will do unnecessary two exams from the img international medical graduate what i feel that you should 
go with MRCP route um, because after MRCP CH, there is no exam. Okay, you will be under directly under training ST3 level or ST4 level. Then you will continue a training for four or five years. Then you can become the consultant. That is the highly prestigious job, okay, in UK. And followed by you can do FRCP CH that is awarded by the Royal College of Physician and Surgeon. That is not an exam, actually. That is the performance you do during your training period. That is the FRCP, okay? So this is the last exam, MRCPCH. So I would suggest the people who are doing training, they should go with this MRCP route rather than PLAB route. But if you want to go early and then give exam in UK MRCP, you are most welcome because PLAB has two parts. Part one is theory part and part two is clinical part. And clinical part, you have to go to UK, okay? That is also nowadays not possible, okay, for COVID. But you can write the exam, MRCPCH part one and part two from home country, like from Bangladesh, you can give exam nowadays. But previously before COVID, when we, we gave exam, we could not. We had to go India or some people went other countries. So we had to travel across the country and then we gave exams, so it was a bit difficult for us. But for you, it is very easy now. Okay, so I should suggest you think again which route is better for you. Okay, so this is it. Okay, and this uh, confusion is clear, everyone. If you have any doubt, please you can ask. Just open your mic and you can ask. Okay, so this is the uh, disadvantage and advantage of MRCPCH. MRCPCH is a bit difficult exam because it is a middle grade level exam. It is an exam that you need a good grip of pediatrics, not only uh, um, a baseline. I mean, you have to be a good clinician also. You have to examine the child during clinical exam and you have to communicate with the parents. So I would suggest that whoever is uh, under training period, any training period, like uh, if you are doing some honorary medical officer or you are doing some medical officer job. <laughs> Sorry, so just uh, mute your mics, please. Okay, so who, whatever uh, level you have, you have just in past MBBS, but you joined uh, some clinical course or you have joined some uh, training. In Bangladesh, it is called honorary me medical tra tra training. Uh, and uh, so these things you can do. And then after this training, you can go through MRCPCH part one and part two. That will be very easy for you and clinical also. Though it is written in the website that two and a half years training will be very good. But what I suggest that whatever the training, you don't worry about the training. You just continue any job, house job, job in the clinics, or maybe private practice, it will be counted. Just don't sit at home. This is the main theme that don't sit at home, do any job. It can be temporary, it can be locum basis, it can be short time, three hours per day, it can be private practice. When you will go to UK, this everything is counted. Okay, every hour is counted. So I will suggest you that keep in touch with the clinical practice and then start preparation of MRCPCH, okay? Now today our discussion is not part one discussion. Today we will discuss about AKP, okay? Part one discussion, I'll take separate class next week, inshallah, before it, I'll try. So we know all that MRCPCH has three exams. Part one is TAS and FOP that you have to pass separately. Part two is AKP, pass mark is combined. I mean, in the morning and evening, there is two paper, two and a half hour exam, but it is combined, pass mark is combined. So even if you did good, in one paper and you did bad in another paper, it's okay. Pass mark will be combined, okay? Uh, is there any question, anyone? Yeah, I will share this PPT, don't worry. I will share this PPT. So pass mark is actually varies. I mean, uh, sometimes passing mark is 55, sometimes 75, because um, this depends how many students gave exam what was the difficult level of question and how many students passed actually. 
so they make made a baseline they made a that is called a graph and by this graph they identify the pass mark okay so pass mark don't bother about pass mark you just study hard and you give exam inshallah all will be passed so what are the question types question types are there are uh, single best answer most of the question will be single best answer and some question will be multiple answer i mean like single best they will give you an x-ray and what is the three possible diagnosis or they will give you a scenario clinical based scenario suppose a child with polyuria and polydipsia what are the three possible scenarios can happen with this child so three possible diagnosis so some question you will get you have to give two answers some question you have to give three answers okay so this is called a multiple uh, answer question and some question will be like part one extended matching i mean there will be three separate question and many answer you have to choose one answer for each question that is the extended matching question so these are the question pattern for akp usually how many question comes 54 to 58 like this okay it's not fixed and you have to remember that questions are very big, very big questions, okay? So this question needs time to read. That's why time management is very, very important, very, very vital for MRCBCH. Because if you waste time in a particular question, the next question may be easy. Next question may be easy, but you cannot answer due to time. So I will suggest if you don't know any answer or you are confused then give the most suitable answer and then put a flag mark there is a flag mark in the left hand side just put the flag mark so that when you finish your paper you can come back and you can see the that your answer is correct or not you know many students say it that first guess is the best guess so whatever you guessed at first that is the best answer so don't try to change the answer. Just be sure that yes, your answer is correct. Okay, until now, any question you can ask me, okay? Any, this is an open discussion. This is not a lecture. So you can ask me any question by opening your mics, okay? Or after finishing. After I finish, Dr. Tahir will discuss about some topics like X-ray ECG. Uh, he made a lecture for you. So he will discuss some topics. Okay, so uh, what we are discussing now that time management is very important, two and a half hour time. And uh, you have to utilize the time very, uh, very meticulously. Now, how many sessions? It is three sessions per year, like MRCPCH part one and part two, both have three sessions. So these sessions are one month behind the part one session, so January, May, and September sessions, you have to give exam. Now online exam is possible because of this COVID, and there is no postponement of any theory exam. Only clinical exam is postponed, but theory exams are going on. So what will be the fee? This is given in the RCPCH website, but be sure that these fees varies, okay? $10, $20, they vary each, each session. So you have to, uh, you have to see the website every time, okay? Now, what is applied knowledge in practice exam, AKP? What is this exam uh, wants from you? Okay, this exam wants that how much you are, uh, how much you can identify a condition by seeing the x-ray and taking some history and doing some examination. And after diagnosing the condition, how can you manage the child? because this is a registrar level exam. So you will be the first person who will see the child in hospital. After that consultant will see the child. So you are the first person that it comes in contact in emergency department, in ward, in NICU. You will be in charge of the NICU. You will be registrar of PICU. So how you manage the emergency, how you manage the child when it comes to you, can you identify the emergency child? Can you identify the red flags? I hope you all know what is red flag. Every disease in MRCPCH has some red flags. Okay, not only 
not only diarrhea, not only diabetic ketoacidosis, every disease, suppose croup, suppose headache, suppose abdominal pain, they all have red flags. Clear? So as a registrar, how you identify these red flags and how, uh, which patient you will admit or which patient you will not admit? Okay, how you will give emergency management? And when you will refer to the consultant, these are the very basic management skill that you need to apply when you will go in UK. Remember, keep in mind that you are not only giving this exam, but you just, you are not only uh, reading uh, this to give exam, but you have to manage the child. You have to manage the patient. So you have to be very confident and very, very knowledgeable and skillful person, okay? Another point, in MRCPCH, remember that they want safe doctor, not the very knowledgeable doctor. What do you mean by safe doctor? Who can identify which patient I will admit, which patient I will discharge, what admission, what treatment I will give. So this is the called, this is called safe doctor. You will not do any harm. Another point is that to being a safe doctor, you should talk you have to be you have the ability to talk with the parents communication this is the main skill for mrcpch that's why ethical question palliative question comes in exam and some question will be will be like communication skill that what advice you will give to the mother if the child came with croup what advice you will give to the mother a child did not get vaccination mother had HIV positive, what advice you will give to the mother? So this, that means you are a safe doctor. You know what advice should be given, right? So this is MRCPCH, okay? In AKP, you have to know this basic skill. So there are two, two parts of this exam, part one and part two, part one in the morning and part two in the evening, two and a half hour exam. Most of the exam, Unlike TAS and FOP, TAS and FOP was very basic question, baseline level question, mechanism of disease, mechanism of drug. But here they will give you some data like renal tubular acidosis. They will give you the electrolyte balance. They will give you the urinary electrolyte balance. Okay, polyuria, polydipsia condition, nephrocalcinosis. They will give you the scenario and they will ask you what three most important investigation is needed in this child. Another after diagnosis, they will ask you what two most important management you will give to this child like this. OK, there will be plenty of pictures, X-ray, CT scan, MRI, ECG, EEG. All will be in the part two exam, unlike part one. Part one, mainly theory based exam, but part two, mainly practical based exam. That's why the name is applied knowledge in practice. That means how you will apply your knowledge in uh, practical life, okay? Then every question, suppose they will give you uh, X-ray, but they will not Every question will be based on a scenario, like some age of the child, problem of the child, examination finding of the child, investigation of the child. Sometimes they will give you an X-ray Okay, then you have to identify the condition. Okay, many question comes from ethical dilemma, from child abuse, safeguarding, from palliative care. So these chapters are very, very important for part one and AKP. Also in clinical, there will be some question regarding ethical, ethical conditions, uh, safeguarding conditions, child protection. Okay, because this is a very, very important topic in UK. So you have to have a good grip of this palliative question, ethical question. Until now, any question you have? So what is the preparation time? Okay, preparation time depends. Some, some students are very, uh, you know, advanced. They are already in middle grade level or consultant grade level specialist already in home country. So for them, around three to four months is enough for AKP. But some students who are under training period, junior, they need at least five to six times with six hours, seven hours study daily. And best is if you do some group study. We used to do group study with our friends. 
we used to do zoom meetings so best is if you do this group study you can pass early because you will discuss with them your faults will be you know corrected by your friends so better make a small group of yourself Okay, sorry for this interruption. Network was uh, fluctuating. So um, some students uh, of mine, they are making groups in WhatsApp and they do study with together after my after I take class. So you can make a small group of yourself, like four or five people, and then you can discuss every day. So what are the resources, books? There are plenty of books for data collection, for data interpretation, for X-ray. But usually what is written here in this chart, these books are enough to pass the exam. So for Penta's clinical exam, clinical cases book, you have to read once again, because these scenarios from FOP, FOP, especially the FOP exam, this scenario comes in directly in AKP also. And task clinical cases also sometimes they give in AKP. So this clinical cases book, some students give AKP exam before part one. Okay, so for them, for them, FOP and TAS book, clinical cases book is very, very important. And the students who already passed part one, for them it is very easy because they already read these books. So after that, you will read clinical case for AKP. That is the same as FOP and TAS book, 50 cases. That is a very important book. Pediatric survival guide is a very, ex I mean, excellent book. It is a, a uh, book that describes the pathophysiology of the disease, investigation of the disease. But I will suggest management portion you should not read because this is a very old book. Now many, many management is changing every day. You know, the medical fields are every day changing. So nowadays, we don't suggest you read management from the old books. Beside that, you read management from the latest guidelines, like NICE guidelines, British Thoracic Society for Asthma guideline, then British Society for Endocrine guidelines, okay, like celiac disease, it changed the management, investigation, many things changed, okay. So what I suggest that from the old book like survival or other books, you read the pathophysiology of the disease. And after that, you read the latest guidelines, latest management. So for this guideline, we will read red book and blue book. These two books are very, very important for MRCPCH. Okay, this blue book neonatal guideline, I will suggest you to read the important topics because in AKP, many question comes from neonatology. But part one, you will get hardly uh, two or three neonatal question. But for AKP, you will get many questions eight to 10 question maybe from neonatology. So better you have to read the, you should read both pediatric red book and blue book of neonatal guideline. Then there are some other books like new format towards, okay, these books are mainly data, data-based book. They have the real scenario of exam like mm, X-ray, there is X-ray, there is ECG, EEG, mix up with scenario, suppose absent seizure. Absent seizure, um, RCPCH will make a question like a scenario, the child is uh, having vacant stare at school. Uh, he cannot concentrate, he is um, deteriorating, school function is deteriorating, but otherwise he's fine. There is no generalized seizure. What is the diagnosis? And they will give you an EEG picture. That picture has, you know, three cycle per second. That is a characteristic of absent seizure. So you have to know, you have to know, you have to know, you have to know that what scenario based question and what kind of 
data and what kind of picture is coming in MRCPCH. Now for the radiology, as Dr. Tahir will take your session today, Dr. Uh, radiology for MRCPCH book is very good, but this is not enough. You have to see the pictures from internet, like Google. Suppose um, uh, CCAM, okay, congenital adenomatoid malformation of the lung, and suppose congenital bulla or uh, congenital emphysema or interstitial lung disease, you have to see the x-ray from the Google. That And sometimes the pictures will not be very clear. So your eyes should be very, very sharp and very familiar with this X-ray, with this EEG, ECG, okay? So that quickly you can identify the problem. So you have to see a lot of, lot of X-ray from the internet. Get through books, this is an old book. So get through for data collection. Okay, this is a very, very old book. You can read if you have time. Otherwise, I don't think it is very important book. Now, for photos, like, and Dr. Tahir and me, we have collected like thousands of pictures for MRCPCH. Starts from here, from tip to the bottom of, top to bottom of your body, like picture will come for alopecia. In the eye, picture will come for cataract or uh, cataract or uh, suppose any disease uh, like bufthalmos or glaucoma related disease. Okay, and then in the mouth, oral ulcer or angular chilitis. In the neck, there may be congenital cyst or cystic hygroma. In the chest, chest wall deformity. Okay, in the abdomen, some stria or some uh, cephalate spot. In the limb, so from head to toe, picture will come. So you have to see many, many pictures from the internet, also from the books characteristic of rashes, pediatric rashes, very important chapter, okay? Now, guideline I already told you, these two books are vital for any MRCPCH exam, part one, part two, and AKP, and also clinical. Nice guidelines, you have to read from internet directly, some guidelines that is not present in these two books. So we will try to make list in our uh, groups, we usually share in our students, with our students. And for practice, you have to do past test or online subscription. In uh, many channels, free channels, uh, there is old subscriptions. Latest subscription, usually you have to buy yourself. That is around 50 or $60, I think, or pounds. So you have to buy uh, online subscription that is the latest. If you don't want to buy, it's okay. You can read the old one because questions are similar. Or most, most of the questions are similar. So you can read online. Uh, you can read these offline questions for practice. Now, sample papers are directly exam questions. So that is the best practice question. You have to practice sample papers. And sample papers are, uh, we have a collection of sample papers. So we will provide our to <laughs> the students. Also, you will find these things in many channels. I have a channel also, you can find these things. Exam recall also, exam recall is very, very important, okay? The, some, some students or some seniors will tell you that recall don't come in exam, but uh, we are the newest batch, we are the latest batch, and we know that recall usually 20 to 30% questions are recall. Directly not similar, but most of the part is similar. Suppose the scenario is similar, but they will just twist it one or two point. Suppose the diagnosis was diabetes okay now previous year question was management of dka now they will give you management of hypoglycemic coma so they will twist a little bit but the main theme of the question will be similar so, so you have to solve the recall as much as possible and in our sessions we will give most corrected recall solve because uh, for our students we have to do this much hardship Okay, so exam recall is very important. In a small group, you can practice this recall. Now, question type are already discussed. There will be single best answer mostly. Some question will be extended matching. Some question will be single best, not single best. Some question will be two or three answer. Okay, 
So you have to choose which two or three answers are appropriate. Any question until now regarding the books or anything? Okay. So now uh, how you will start your study? Okay, first you list the books, make it hard copy of these books, okay? Then you make a timetable, make a routine of your books that which book you will read. Try to make it system wise, like uh, today you will read cardiology, then after that you will plan for respiratory, after that gastrointestinal, try like this, okay? And try to read from mix up like AKP cases book, then some cases from new format, some from guideline. Okay, try to mix up these things. And also side by side, you should practice online subscription uh, if you take, or if you have any question bank like past test or on, on exam, you can practice side by side so that it will sharp your, uh, your ability to solve the MCQ. And then afterwards, you should, after some months, like one or two months, when you're, you have a good grip of your exam, of your practice, you should solve the recall. Because recall have many, many, you know, wrong answer. Because this is recall. Someone came from exam and they recall the question, they write it in a paper. So they, they are mixed answer. Okay. And some are wrong answers. So you have to be very careful during solving the recall and try to see as much as possible X-ray, ECG pictures from books and Googles, from Google photo. And in our uh, classes, we will try to provide you a bank of EEG, ECG, X-ray that are very important. That is called, you know, we will pin, we will pin up the important topics. And past exam, sample exam, I said, recall and sample paper are very important. You know, what I feel that Beside reading many books, you should stick some books that are very good for exam and you should revise it again and again. Because if you read many books, like if you open Nelson and then open Gomela and then open Cloherty, like these say books, and then you try to solve question, then it will be very, very tough for you. So make two, three books as a, as a parent book and keep noting on them. Attach small paper in the book and keep making notes, okay? And in our sessions, <clears throat> what I and Dr. Tahir will teach you, you can write it down in the class and you can make notes. So that will be very easy for you, for your preparation. Then if you think that I will study slowly and then before exam, I'll study hard. That is not the way actually. Actually the way is you have to make a routine and every day you should at least four to five hours you should study at least if you are working if you are not work, working then six hours seven hours you can do okay and as i previously said that exam timing is very important for akp don't think that two and a half hour 54 question is very good no problem no 54 question is very big very big question so you will not be able to answer if you are very slow. So try to be, make it fast, okay? Now, some question asked me that statistics is important for AKP. Yes, of course, there will be at least three to four question. Four question I got in last exam. So you will get four question from statistics. So it is an important, it is an important part of the exam. Mainly the statistics for part one and part two are different. Part one, which is very basic question like specificity, sensitivity, okay, negative predictive value, positive predictive value. But for AKP, it will be a little bit difficult. Like for the from the confidence interval, from the mean, from the odds ratio, from the relative risk, how you identify this study is significant or not. This type of question mainly comes in AKP. And we will try to give uh, solve you as many as statistics question possible in our batch. Now, pharma from the past exam, mainly pharmacology, there is no book for AKP for pharmacology, but mainly the question comes like part one question, like the drug methylphenidate side effect. Okay. 
anti-epileptic drug side effects. Mainly side effects will come in this AKP exam. So you have to be very good grip of, um, of the drugs that is frequently coming in exam. Like, as I said, anti-epileptic drugs, diuretics, and then anti-drugs for ADHD, drug for cerebral palsy. This drug side effect, you should know very well. And previously I said to you that there'll be no exam in MRCPCH without ethics and palliative, without child protection, okay? So these chapters, and we will make you notes. We will give you notes of these ethics and palliative questions for our batches. And also in my group Telegram channel, there are many, many notes I shared previously. You can click my channel name and you will see there will be lots of pictures and PDFs that are free for all of you. You can go to my channel, click the name of the channel and you will see the pictures. You will see the PDF file. Okay, from there you can take your preparation. And for my students, I will prepare some lectures for uh, ethics and palliative so that it will be easy for them. And most important thing, what I used to do in my exam, in all exam, not only MRCBCH, all the exams that I used to make my hand notes, small, small hand notes in a, you know, in a notebook. One page, I used to make one note. And that notes, trust me, that notes are very, very important before exam. Like, you know, five day before exam, four day before exam, when you have no mood to read or your brain is just burdened of the study, you have no energy to study. That time you just see your notes. It will be very helpful for you. When you are doing recall, just make a note of recall. Okay, so that the difficult question you can memorize. Suppose the investigation findings, which one has hypokalemia, which one has hyperkalemia, which condition has metabolic acidosis, which condition has metabolic alkalosis. These things students easily forget. You can make a small note of them in your notebook. Okay, before exam, just see that note. It will be very helpful. Okay, and I I can tell you that in MRCPCH, the, these electrolyte imbalance and the metabolic disturbance, they are the most most important topics. Maximum question you will see either problem in electrolyte or problem in metabolic disturbance. Now sometimes question from the sub box directly comes in exam. So sub box, I again revise, I will suggest you revise again. And recall, solve, do not leave recall, uh, solve before your exam. Okay, you have to start solving the recall from the beginning. Okay. And in exam day, I saw some students leave the exam hall, I don't suggest this thing. I always suggest that take your time revise your flagged question if you have time, okay? Okay, so I hope this um, this preparation, these slides helped you and uh, also it will help you in May because some students have exam in May, okay? And uh, some students have in October. So I hope there are some students here. So uh, if you follow this advice, okay, your preparation will be very good and passing of AKP is not so difficult. If you study hard, it is not so difficult. These are the books mainly, pediatric guideline, neonatal guideline, and uh, new format, AKP book, cases book, radiology book, statistics books. These are the main books for AKP you will need in your exam. Now, why I will study MRCPCH if I don't go to UK? Yes, that is a very good question, but even in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, MRCPCH is a very prestigious degree. They, they recognize it as a post-graduation qualification. Even other countries like Australia or other countries, they recognize it as a post-graduation post qualification. So uh, you will, you will uh, be honored with this degree. And if you go in UK, definitely you will get a very good job. Okay, your training will be counted. You can become a part of UK citizen. So that is the main point. Anyone having any question? Okay, someone asked me that what is my Telegram channel? Okay, I'm giving here in this comment box my Telegram channel. Also, if you have any doubts, uh, you can message me. This is my number. 
you can message me for my channels for my youtube channel i have a youtube channel and i have telegram channel whatsapp i have whatsapp channels and also facebook channels so anything you can join as you wish and for my batch uh, to contact me that is starting from the 18th of may okay 18th of may our akp batch is starting so for the september exam okay not for may exam and uh, you can contact me this is my number and dr tahir is here he will give you a, sh you a short slide about uh, some topic he prepared for you or if you have any question you can ask me or you can uh, put your question in the comment box dr tahir are you here yeah yeah i'm here dr tamanna yeah, please take over okay thank you uh, dr tamanna can you uh, post my uh, slides over here yeah i'm i'm making you uh, co-host so you can you can share okay you just unmute unmute yourself okay i'm making you co-host you can now share yeah please share dr tamanna can you share please because uh, okay, okay. i have in my laptop okay. actually okay okay i'm sharing no problem just then give me just one minute time okay i'm just sharing okay you can uh, you can talk dr tahir you can give your introduction yeah okay uh well uh, good evening all of you i'm dr tahir hayat i'm a consultant pediatrician from pakistan uh, uh, it's the first time i think i'm uh, with dr tamanna we we are colleagues since long but uh, taking this uh, AKP portion. This is my first time with Dr. Tamanna. Uh, as uh, you know, AKP, uh, she, I think, very thoroughly and very briefly, she discussed from top to bottom uh, what is AKP, uh, how it is going on today in these COVID conditions, and uh, what are the books, what are the links, and everything. So I think I do not need to go into the detail of uh, about the AKP. I actually, for today's lecture, I just took two portions. Uh, that is the radiology and the ECG portion, because I think these are a bit troublesome for some of the candidates. Um, I think as far as the AKP session is, uh, the exam is concerned, it's a very tricky exam. Uh, you cannot pass it by sheer studies. Uh, I think it is an exam which you will get through with a solid uh, pediatric base uh, and a very good coaching. And uh, of course, study. Study, of course, matters. You, you cannot rule out study. Um, regarding uh, AKP, it is a bit different from that of the part one. Most of you might be taking AKP for the first time. Uh, most of you might be having it uh, once. Uh, I mean, it might be the second time you might be appearing. And some of the candidates might be taking AKP uh, first rather than the part one. So the candidates who have uh, cleared uh, MRCPCH1 uh, the difference AKP is having is that in AKP, the stem, it's very lengthy. As Dr. Tamanna said that you should not think that, oh, it's just 50 uh, questions. I'll solve them in just a minute, uh, just a matter of some time. But, you know, uh, you should not think like this because the stem, they are so big that uh, I think only reading them once will take you three to four minutes for every question. But the good thing is uh, regarding the, Emma, the Royal College uh, MCQs or the scenarios that uh, it, it's a type of a story. And if you involve yourself in the question, uh, you really enjoy that. One of my uh, colleague, he used to tell me that whenever you solve any scenario, you just think that you are a physician sitting in your clinic and a patient is coming to you and he's giving you this history. So what are you going to do now? So just think that 
uh, and just solve them. Uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, so today, the topics which I took are the radiology and the ECG. Uh, so I think let's start them. Uh, it's uh, just an introductory session. So um, what to expect in my session? Uh, you know, it's radiology plus ECG, a 30 minute session. Uh, we should not expect that I should go from top to bottom of radiology from A to Z of ECG. It's not possible in 30 minute session, but I'm just gonna give you a, a, just a brief uh, uh, over, over look of what type of thing you can get in your exam from radiology and what sort of uh, things you can get from ECG. Uh, I just chose three or four uh, scenarios for radiology and the same for the ECG, that these sort of questions you can get in your exam. And uh, all of these uh, scenarios, which I actually took uh, in today's introductory session, they are basically from the past exam. But because as I told you that in AKP, the, uh, the STEM is very big. So I just posted a small STEM in my own wordings. And uh, 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 so ju just to make a slide smaller, not very much congested. So let's go uh, start with the radiology session. I'll take questions at the end. So anything uh, you want to ask, you, you can ask at the end. You just write with yourself note down and then we will discuss them and I'll take all questions inshallah, okay? So let's start, uh, first go to the radiology. See, radiology is, is a really tricky thing. Um, it's not something very easy and it's not something very hard. Uh, it, it's a sort of a thing if uh, in exam, if, if I mean, you just give your thorough attention, uh, I think you will definitely get through it because the, the radiology uh, slides which they are giving in the exam, I think they are very common. Yes, sometimes you can uh, get an odd one, but most of the time they are really, really simple. Uh, just you uh, need to concentrate. And in every uh, scenario, there is just a small trick. Anyone who unlock that trick will get through. And what is my job, uh, Dr. Tamanna's job is to let you know that trick. You all are doctors, you all are untalented, you all have a good background, you have, all have a knowledge. Our job is just to uh, guide you. So uh, the first scenario, we'll just take one scenario. It's a scenario about a newborn uh, whose uh, oxygen saturation is 85% uh, with a reduced entry on the left hemithorax. The CVS examination is unremarkable. He's at capnic. Uh, you're giving supplemental oxygen, but it's not working. The consultant, he advised an X-ray just to see what's that. And uh, next slide, please, Dr. Manu. Yeah, uh, sorry, the previous, yeah, there. So you did an X-ray and you find this thing. Now, if you look at the X-ray, there are different ways the, which we have learned uh, that how to read an X-ray. So your reading of an X-ray might be different than that of the me. Mine might be different than that of the Dr. Tamanna. Dr. Tamanna reading might be different from the other guy. So everyone is having his own way of reading an X-ray. Uh, some people, they use the A, B, C, D, E, H, F, I, J, and so on technique. That is A for airway, B for bones, C for cardiac shadow, D for diaphragm, and so on. Some people, they say, no, just look the lung field, look the cardiac field, look the bones, look the tummy, and that's all. 
uh, some would say no i do not need to go into that detail just look and it's just a uh, hammer on the nail so everyone is different like this is an x ray this is a real exam x ray uh, i mean this is taken from the net but the same x ray have come in a real exam in akp so if you look at the x ray anyone who has spent some of the time in uh, pediatrics in uh, er or in pediatric uh, surgery they might have definitely come across this x ray it's really simple for someone but there might be some candidates who have just done their uh, mbbs uh, and they, they might not be having that much experience in pediatrics so they they need to see these x ray time and again and especially they need to google them for every top topic they need to google an x ray and uh, they they might to need to see the x ray again and again as dr tamanna said so if you see in this x ray you see the right hemidiaphragm you see you see the right side of the chest and you see the left side of the chest so there is definitely a difference it's not a normal x ray of course so it's a very easy for someone who has spent uh, time in pediatrics they can easily say that yeah there is some problem in the left side of the hemithorax and that problem is pushing the heart to the right side so there is some mass effect uh, building on the left side uh, in exam uh, there will be a window when you click that window it will zoom up and this x ray will pop out and you you can zoom this x ray Uh, as much as you want and uh, then you have to comment so if you go to the back uh, dr tai sorry let them uh, uh, let them answer okay anyone can answer yeah. this scenario and the question please back the yeah back yeah for here yeah. please this this is the newborn okay newborn spo2 is 85 and you see there is tachypnea and oxygen is not helping and uh, there is a chest x ray can anyone tell us what is the x ray features the students will give exam please what is the x ray the diaphragmatic hernia the diaphragmatic hernia yes with sided with sided diaphragmatic hernia left side left sided side. Okay. yeah well, well done yeah so the the left side uh, usually that is called the bosch dalic and the right side is more gagney 90% it's the left side and 8 to 10% it's the right side okay so it's very simple once you see this you will never forget it sometime in uh, such uh, scenario they can give you the findings that there is a gurgling sound on the uh, stethoscope and they, they can make anything out of it they can give you different type of scenarios but usually the common one which is here that oxygen will be low it will not be going up so you have to differentiate between the uh, cyanotic congenital heart between uh, infective cause and between a surgical cause so only uh, okay there can be another scenario that they will give you that a newborn uh, with this this scenario and at the end they will say that it has been diagnosed as a case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia so what you will do first so they will give you different options that bag the child pass intubate him give him iv fluids give him high flow oxygen give him non rebreathing mask oxygen so they can give you a different uh, type of things but the latest guidelines they say that you should not bag this child you should straight away ventilate this child and uh, just uh, ventilate him until his uh, oxygen saturation is a good uh, in good range you should prepare him for the surgery as soon as possible just to prevent uh, uh, chronic lung condition okay so we are going to the next slide dr tamanna yeah this is another scenario i'm just giving you a different uh, the 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 variety which you can get as a, a radiology scenarios in your exam it can vary from scenario number 1 to scenario number 4th or 5th so ju just see uh, the difference 
The second scenario, it's about a four uh, days old unit with a serum creatinine of five gram per deciliter. Uh, that's very high. The normal is less than one. Uh, some people might talk, talk about the millimole. So uh, it's more than 400 maybe in millimole per liter. And there is a reduced urine output. The ultrasound abdomen was done, which shows bilateral hydronephrosis. Uh, there is a study performed, uh, which we'll see in the next slide. Uh, just see that study and give your most likely diagnosis. So can you show them? Yeah, you, you can zoom it for yourself. Uh, just say what is this study performed and what is your diagnosis? Keeping in mind the scenario. Anyone? Anybody can tell us what is the scenario? The minute? It's IVP and COP. There is a background noise. Sorry, anyone can tell us what is that? POV. See, this is a neonet. They did not say you. They did not tell you that it is a male or female, but neonet. Creatinine was high. Urine output was low. Definitely there was renal compromise. Ultrasound showed bilateral hydronephrosis. Now, when bilateral hydronephrosis, that is what goes with infection of posterior valve. Okay, now they did some study. So by this study, this, uh, I mean, there is a mix up of scenario with this, uh, see, there is a uh, contrast, contrast X-ray. So can anyone tell me why you think it is posterior valve? Can anyone describe this urethra? This is a male baby, definitely. You see the picture is a male baby. Can anyone describe the picture? Why it is a posterior valve? Why you think this is posterior? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, yeah. yes. There is, there is obvious accumulation of the contrast in the bladder yeah. and yeah. narrowing just below the urethra. You can appreciate the narrowed area just below yeah. the bladder neck. Yeah. Bladder neck, yeah. So there is a proximal distension and distal narrowing. Before narrowing, there is a distension. That means urine cannot pass. From, you know, urine cannot overcome, right? Dr. Tahir will explain you more. Yes, I think you are right. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, absolutely right, Dr. Tamanna, that there is a dilatation of the proximal urethra and there is a dent sign. If you see, there is, uh, uh, there is really narrowing where you can feel that there is an absent of contrast just at the junction of the proximal dilated portion and the distal ureter, uh, which is actually the valve. And the other thing that how you will differentiate between that is this an IVP performed or is it an uh, MCUG? How, how you'll differentiate? Anyone? Okay, please respond, anyone. What is the question of Dr. Tahir? I'll, I'll just repeat my question that let's suppose you get this study uh, in your exam uh, how will you differentiate that whether this is an IVP or IVU performed or this is an MCUG? How to yeah. differentiate between the two? Uh, very good question. I mean, it is coming from above or the dye is coming from above or the yeah. dye is coming from down below. How you will differentiate? Because there is a catheter. I think I can see the catheter, yes. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, the, there are only two things which you need to look for. Number first is the catheter. If there is a catheter inside, this is definitely uh, MCUG. And the second thing is that for IVP on the X-ray, on the side of that, there will be time written. Five minute film, 10 minutes film, 20 minutes film, 30 minutes yeah. film. That thing yeah. is not there in MCUG. So yeah. on these two, you can just uh, uh, differentiate between the two. That's a very good point, Dr. Tahir. It's a very important point because they will give you this X-ray. Same X-ray they will give you about the intravenous pyelogram, okay? And intravenous urogram, same X-ray, but there will be no catheter. And the patient will get from a cannula, the dye, okay? Radionucleated dye. And also 
there will be time frame like 24 hours delay okay in mcog there is not no such thing but in ivp or ivu there will be some time frame because they see the delayed excretion and sometimes they do the you know frusemide sometimes they use frusemide to uh, overcome the uh, kidney function so this is a very important point and these things uh, are very a little bit tough for the students who are very new who are just past mbbs for them it is a little bit tough so a teacher like dr tahir he will definitely help you in understanding this much tough situations and this will help you in passing easy passing of your exam okay yeah dr tahir yeah thank you dr manna uh, i mean uh... Our job is not to teach you. We are not actually teachers. We are just facilitators. We, we, we will just facilitate you because your knowledge might be a very sound one. But, uh, you know, we can give what we got from our experience uh, from the day-to-day -day things which we are seeing in our, our clinics, Dr. Manami. So we'll just share that experience with you. So it's basically a facilitation sort of thing. Uh, so you see, the radiology can vary from an x-ray to something complicated like this like it can be a barium study it can be a nucleotide study it, it can be anything in akp so uh, we we need to move to the third scenario dr Munna. yeah uh, it's about a four months old uh, boy uh, baby whose parents are divorced a month back the, these, these words are really important, whose parents are divorced a month back. Presented with pillar and generalized tonic-clonic fits uh, in the ER. On examination, his anterior fontanelle is full, bulging and tense. Uh, you can see the scan which is given and uh, you can give your diagnosis regarding this. So this is the scan. Uh, anybody can explain First of all, anybody can explain this CT scan, then we'll go to the diagnosis. Just uh, can anyone explain what you see? Just tell us what you see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the midline shift. Midline shift, yes. And which side has the problem? Right side. Left side. Left side. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is the Dr. Suleiman typed. Yeah, this is the problem. What is this? Is it extra dura or sub dura? What is the shape of this? It's like kind of shape. It is a EDH, extra dura. Shape. Extra dura. Crescentic shape, right? Sub dura or extra dura? Extra dura. Extra dura sub. will be crescentic shape, but this is. No, it, it's, it's, it's a, Yeah, it's a subdural. Subdural. Subdural yeah. because you know it's like a banana. So sub S U B sub B for banana. So it's a banana sort of thing. So it it will uh, be subdural. And the other one is a is a crescent shape, and that is a a, a bulge sort of thing, and that is a extradural. So this question which we saw, it can present you in different ways. If you see, uh, Dr. Mani, can you go back? One yeah, slide yeah. back. Yeah, 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 I'll go back. So you see this picture as I, I draw. Subdura is will be like, you know, like a crescent shape. But this is called biconcave. Biconcave, sorry, biconvex. Yeah. Biconvex shape is extra dura, okay? Extra dura will be like, in Bangla, you can say potol, maku. And subdura is just like a banana, okay? Because... Yeah. Why these things happen, Dr. Tahir can, Dr. Tahir can explain. Why this is like banana shape and this will be like this shape, why? Yeah, because that is just beneath the dura the, and the, the, the subdural one. Yeah. And the other one is outside. So, so it can expand to both sides, but this one cannot expand to both sides, the subdural one. So that's why it will give you a, yeah. a presentation of a banana and the other one will give you a bike and convex sort of a thing yeah just one minute i'm just sometimes it's a problem in the okay just one minute yeah so you combine with the yeah. scenario yeah now 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 just concentrate looking at the scenario just concentrate at the four different answers which are given 
child abuse, subdural, extradural, and vitamin K deficiency. Now, a good student, when he sees this scenario, he, he becomes really confused that what to do here. Because it can be a non-accidental injury, like a child abuse. It, it, let's suppose Dr. Tamanna is a candidate, she click child abuse. I'm a candidate, I click subdural. There is another candidate who is from India, Pakistan, or in our area where vitamin K deficiency is really common. He said, no, it can be a vitamin K deficiency. So to be honest, all the three answers are correct. So sometimes you can get such a teaser, which can be having uh, two or three good answers and valid answers. So what the uh, Royal College, they, they, they have their own key. They might consider all the three answers correct, but let's suppose each scenario has five or six uh, marks. So they might give subdural six marks. They might give the child abuse a four marks and they might give the vitamin K two marks. So all are correct, but they can give uh, as they like, or it can be the other way around they, because the child abuse and the non-accidental injury topics, they are very fond of, they are very favorite of the Royal College. So they might think that this is a case of child abuse. They might give six marks to this uh, scenario who has opted for child abuse. They might give the subdural five marks and they might give the vitamin K one mark. So it depends upon them. So you can have such teaser in your exam. So be ready for this. This was just an example. I like to add some points. Uh, why uh, this child, uh, why the child abuse will get the highest mark? Because you see, this is a four month child. Four month child means it is a non movable child. Okay, before six months, a child does not move. Usually they crawl in four to six months. So this is four months only. The child cannot crawl at this month and the child parents were divorced that means there was some family disharmony maybe the father or maybe the mother is the is the accused okay and the child came with pallor i mean there is severe injury in the brain okay why i will not opt vitamin k deficiency because this is four months vitamin k hardly present after one month okay there is immediate type uh, late type and very late type. So very late type will be at one month, not at four month, number one. Number two, why I will not choose subdural? Subdural can be an accidental injury, but this child, why this child will have accident? He's not moving child. If the mother gives history that this is an accidental fall, remember accidental fall has some height, has some height, and that will create bony prominent area of injury. So they will give you some more clue that occipital bone or frontal bone is injured. That can be accident. But bone in the region of the face, neck, like temporal bone, these are not the usual part for the injury. This child has a temporal part. That is the area of confinement. That is the area of safe zone. Okay, usually we don't fall on the temporal zone. We fall on frontal zone or occipital zone. So definitely the answer is child abuse. It is not an accidental injury. It is non-accidental. I mean, child abuse. Okay, so when you choose any answer, you have to think about the rationality of the answer. Okay? Yes, Dr. Tahir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tamanna. What Dr. Tamanna said, this is what they want from you. This is called a consultant or registrar level thinking. Not consultant, a registrar level thinking. So they want this thing from you. Why, what Dr. Tamanna said, this is a four month old. The child cannot move. He cannot roll over because the rollover starts after six months and the parents are divorced. So there are two things which you can see in this child. So definitely this, this baby, he has been thrown by someone because there is a disharmony in the family. So she explained perfectly. So that's why the child abuse will be the answer here. Now, if someone, um, who, who has studied maybe six months inside his room. He did not come out even for his breakfast, but he just saw the X-ray, uh, the CT scan picture, and he said, oh my God, this is subdural, go for subdural. Uh, so he got less marks. 
and someone he he might be a bit sharp enough and uh, that's why they say that exam sharpness is really important so you need to be very vigilant in your scenarios you, you might be getting such sort of a scenarios time and again in your in your exams and this is how they judge you because the simple answers may be 50 candidates appearing all of the 50 might get through but 10 scenarios might be like this tricky one and that might be the deciders and when you get your score uh, the pass candidate score and the fail candidate score there is just a matter of few scenarios right or wrong okay dr manna next one please excuse me can i add it yeah please but there is no a uh, bruise or nothing no external injuries was not mentioned even though if there is not mentioned we can go for the child abuse uh well, you're really right. Actually, we are talking about, uh, I, I told you these are really uh, real exam scenarios, which I picked from the different uh, recalls. But I, because in the recall, they, they do not give you the exact scenario. So I had to make this scenario from myself. In your exam, you will be having a very lengthy scenario of uh, this case. And you will be having everything in that. But uh, we, we, we just wanted to touch the things that how you can get it. There might not be anything outside. It can be just a throw. Maybe the husband and wife, they were fighting with each other. The, the wife, she was carrying the baby and in between the, uh, between the fight and uh, they just throw the baby uh, and the baby fall down. There, there might not be anything outside uh, or, or there can be uh, definitely a bruise or anything. You're right. Yeah. Another point is that, you know, in child injury, child's bone is very soft, okay? So e easily the impact of the force transmitted into the organs. In yeah. comparison to the adults, adults bones are very hard. So suppose chest injury and brain injury. If I blow into the head of an adult, he will have some mark, his bro bone will break but his brain will be saved. But as the children bone, especially the infant bone are very elastic, the, even the skull bone is elastic. They are not totally, totally not, uh, you know, the totally not ossified. So when you give any blow into the head, suppose there is a kick or punch into the head, what will happen? There'll be no external injury because the force of impact it will directly go into the brain and there will be hemorrhage, massive hemorrhage without any external injury. Okay. So this is very, very important question that even without any external injury, there can be internal hemorrhage, which is a sign of non-accidental injury. And you have to think about that. Okay. Why, why this is non-accidental, we previously discussed. Okay. And even without any external mark, because the bone is soft, so maximum force is transmitted to the brain and the blood vessels torn and there is massive bleeding inside. If it is an adult, it would not be easy to punch in the head and there'll be bleeding. It is not so easy because adult's head is very hard, right? But it is, it is an infant. So this is very common scenario, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly. The fibrous bone, uh, it, it will be difficult to find anything uh, fracture or uh, uh, anything as Dr. Taman explained perfectly. Uh, so we are moving towards the next scenario. Uh, in this case, uh, the, there was a study which was conducted upon a 10 years old boy with an unexplained hypertension. So they're asking that what's the study and what does it shows? So can you show them the study, please? Yeah. So anyone, any idea? What is we this can study? Go, yeah, yeah, we can what? go back to the options. Yeah, thank you. It is which kind of study? Is it DMSA, DTPA, gallium scan, DM, DMSA with right renal or left renal? So anyone can tell us what is the difference between DTPA and DMSA? 
how you will know by seeing the picture that this is not a DTPA, this is not a DMFA. Anyone having any idea? Okay, in the chat box, they are writing that it is DAMSA, right renal region. Now, how you identify in the DAMSA scarring that this is right and this is left, it is not written, okay? Can you see right, left? No, it is not written. Anyone yeah, it's, it's, it's not written, but if they get a real one, sometime it's written. Uh, but, but they are written so small that you need to zoom it, uh, especially in the real scans. And sometime they, they give you the posterior oblique view so there is written RPO, right posterior oblique. So if the, tr the point is that if uh, there is written RPO, it means it's a right kidney, right posterior oblique view. And if it's later written LPO, the left posterior oblique view, so it means that it's a left kidney. Uh, but, but you need to keep in mind that in this case, it's the left uh, kidney. Uh, I, I mean, I cannot explain you, but but it, it, it's a scan which is taken by a gamma camera, and they are taken in such a way that that uh, it's taken. I mean, from the right, so the right of uh, the picture is your right, and the left of the picture is your left side of the kidney. The gamma camera it takes the picture like this. Yeah, so, it is so, a very important point. The picture is taken from the back, not from yeah. the front. Okay, so yeah. the left side will be your left side and right exactly. side will be your right side. So this is the problem in the left kidney, not in the right kidney. Yeah, so, so there is a left apical and lateral or posterior uh, scarring in the left kidney. So why not DMS, Dr. Tahir, why not uh, this yeah. is DTPA? Yeah, DTPA, actually, if you see the picture of the DTPA, it, it, it's, it's, it's different. There is a graft sort of a thing given in which there is a Lasix, uh, the frucimide shot will be given and there will be a graph, different sort of a graph will be there in that case. And the scars is only picked, that, that one is a functional study. And this one is actually specifically for the scarring, the yeah. DSA, S for scarring. So this one is for scarring and the other one is for functional. If you see the pictures of the DTPA, that is actually a graphical sort of a thing in which one kidney, what will happen that there will be a buildup of pressure inside, 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 and that will suddenly come down and there will be a frucimide shot given in between. Uh, that is called a frucimide challenge. So that, that will be a separate graph. So if you have a graphical sort of a thing, that will be the DTPA. But yeah. if you have a... Uh, Imaging, scarring, imaging, yeah, yeah scarring image like, sort of thing, yeah, showing scarring, giving arrows like this, it will be uh, DMSA. See, DMSA is only for students, scarring. Yeah, maximum students said it is right renal scar. So you see, the picture is easy, but the answer is difficult. Yeah. Know the condition, but answer will be twisted. This is the AKP exam. Exam, when you go in exam hall, you will find so easy question. But after coming, you will find fail, fail mark. Pass mark did not come. Why? Because this is the trick of this exam. Okay, the exam questions are easy, but the answer is not so easy. They make it some twisting. Here, maximum student will fail to identify the right and left. Because if you give it is a right kidney problem, then answer will be wrong. You will get zero. Okay. Another is that you have to identify DTPA and DMSA. Another another trick in this question is the child had hypertension. If this child had DTPA study, then must be the kidney must be swollen. DTPA, we see excretion of the type. So we see the function or swollen kidney. Okay, that is DTPA, but not DMSA. This child already compromised. Renal function is compromised. He developed hypertension. So that means it must be D DMSA. We see scarring. The cause of hypertension is scarring. And with sided scarring, this is the main thing. Okay, this you have to identify. Okay, any question? Okay. 
so okay uh, we, we will proceed forward so it means uh, now we are going towards the ecg session but before that just a small comment on this radiology so as you saw that radiology from scenario one to scenario four we move from a simple towards a difficult scenario in one it was a simple x-ray uh, which we are really familiar with then we moved towards a bit uh, difficult one uh, uh, then we move toward the CT scan, and then we, we move toward the most advanced thing that is the uh, DMSA or DTPA or the HIDA scan, or it can be any scan, it can be a Mikkel scan. There are a lot of things which you need to remember. It can be a thyroid scan, it, it can be a uh, invertogram, it, it can be anything. Uh, you, you have a lot of things. We have compiled all that. Uh, I have a very good lecture about all, all of these things, but the problem is it's a really uh, short uh, lecture. So I just want to let you know what you can have in your exam. Yeah. So now we move toward the next section, the ECG. Uh, well, ECG, uh, I mean, it's again, very simple. And at the same time, it's really difficult. And at the same time, it's really tricky. But uh, regarding the ECG of the AKP, I think it's not that difficult because they have given you the scenario and a sharp candidate can get a lot of things from that scenario. And it can, he can, even if he knows nothing about the uh, ECG thing, but if he picked that scenario, he can really solve that easily. Um, I have uh, really two, three uh, scenarios just to let you know uh, how uh, it will be done. I cannot explain uh, rate, rhythm, axis, everything in this small 10 to 15 minutes time, uh, but I'll just let you know what type of questions can come in your exam in AKP um, regarding uh, EC uh, cardiac station. So we take the first scenario. Uh, it's about a six months old who was rushed to the ER by her mom for a fast heart rate. The ER physician, he also acknowledges that yes, it's a fast heart rate. So he did an ECG for him. Just look at the ECG and just give your diagnosis. So uh, can you just next, yeah. So usually in your exam, you, you can have a strip like this of one lead or you can have all uh, uh, ECG uh, in your exam. So, so it, it, it's a variation. So here you have just a strip. So anyone can comment. Can anyone guess by seeing this uh, previous, you see the previous slide of ECG? This is six months and came to ER by fast heart rate, six month baby, okay? And what do you think? Is it SVT or sinus tachycardia or flutter? No. What do you think? You see, this is, hello, uh, uh, can, can I talk? Yeah, 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 yeah. You saw? You this are, is SVT. Sin, uh, narrow and uh, yeah. if you see, it's regular. Yeah. Find any B wave before QRS. Yes. It around uh, maybe. Uh, Hello. Yes. Two hundred. Uh, around uh, one eighty. Hello. Yes. Hello. So almost think, is SVT. I think it's I think it's an SVT because there is no P wave preceding the QRS complex. Okay. We're only having so, QRS uh, and then P wave. Okay, okay. What is the heart rate in this child? Can anyone calculate the heart rate? How to calculate the heart rate? It's, um, actually it's two, uh, uh, 300 divided by, 300 divided by? Heart rate is about 150. Yes. So 300 exactly. divided by two, two big, yes. two big squares. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, it's about 150, yes, right. I think I think she did really well uh, to pick that uh, there is absent P wave in this case. So it's very important to diagnose an SVT. Uh, you, you need to look look for the absent P wave. 
uh, at times the P wave can be present and there can be a severe tachycardia. Uh, so what in that case, what it can be? The same, the same ECG strip with P wave. So what will be the diagnosis then? Sinus tachycardia. Yeah, yeah. really, very yes. good, yeah. So sometimes they, they can twist the things like the same scenario with the present of P wave, but they will give you that there is a neck swelling. So they will ask you the diagnosis and they would have given the Graves disease. So in that case, you will not say this is a sinus tachycardia, you will say it's a Graves disease. So that's the thing which you need to make in your mind that you need to give a broad view to the scenario. It, 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 it should be a telescopic view. It should not be a tunnel vision view. Like you, you, you might be right that this ECG is uh, present P wave 150 heart rate. You will say that yes, this is a supraventricular tachycardia. Uh, sorry, it's it's a sinus tachycardia, but you missed the swelling, the neck swelling. So the take home message is that read the scenario and uh, just do not look at the picture only. Most of the candidates who have failed, uh, I just did a sort of study upon them because the AKP exam is really an exam of pictures. Whoever is sharp uh, in picking the scenarios will pass, not the one who is sharp in uh, picking the pictures because most of the candidates who I, I found failed are the students who concentrate on the pictures and then they give the answers. Most of them, they will fail. So the candidate who concentrate on the scenario and then see the picture will pass. So that was the take home message in this scenario. So uh, we are rushing to the second scenario. The parents of a three years old Jenny went on picnic and left her with her granny. Uh, and the granny is on antidepressants. Few hours later, her granny found her unconscious with abnormal pulse. She, was, she rushed her to the nearby hospital where an ECG was done. Uh, see the ECG and tell your findings in such cases. Yeah, uh, next slide please. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, uh, this uh, you have just to twist your mobile because uh, I had just a limited time to prepare my lecture. So I, I had this ECG with me. So if someone can tell me the findings, it's okay. But if someone cannot tell me the findings, then I can tell you. You can turn your mobile and you can see the ECG. Yeah. <laughs> Just see the scenario again, okay? This is a, what is the clue of this scenario? Three years old, okay? Came with picnic. And who, I mean, the grandmother is in antidepressant drug. And few hours later, the grandmother found her unconscious. So, and unconscious and also there is no pulse. So, this child, this history of antidepressant, like amitriptyline, not triptyline. We know amitriptyline, not triptyline, they have side effects in the heart ECG, okay? And the answer is tachycardia, white QRS, prominent R wave, all of the above. If you see now this, the QRS complex is broad. Okay, so what is the diagnosis here? Anyone can open mic and say, I think it's a bit difficult one, but as I told you that the one who concentrate on the scenario will will answer it rather than the one who concentrate on the picture. As I told, Dr. Tamanna told you that there is a, I'm sorry, someone is talking, but we cannot listen. Yeah, I mean, the network is not good. Yeah. Uh, so the hint in this uh, scenario is that antidepressant the granny is taking the granny is taking antidepressants 
So most likely she's a three year toddler. So which is a very common age for taking pills. So this is more likely that she took the antidepressant. So a sharp candidate will think that, oh, let's suppose a child take antidepressant. So what can happen to the heart? So if he knows that uh, what can happen with the SSRI, the most common antidepressants or the tryptoline groups. So what will happen? So there can be a tachyarrhythmias and there can be a bradyarrhythmias. But in this ECG, if you see, this is a sort of a tachyarrhythmia. There is a tachycardia. And Dr. Tamanna said there is a white QRS complex. Yes. And if you see, uh, they have given you the answer. Check for AVR and look for prominent R wave. Is there any prominent R wave in lead AVR? Yes. So all the three above. Yes, because the typical three findings, which you will see in the SSRIs, these three findings you will see. There will be a tachycardia, there will be a white QRS complex, there will be a prominent R wave in lead AVR. They might not be present all at, uh, in each case, uh, but the tachycardia and the white QRS are really common. So uh, I'm sorry, the ECG, because it's an original ECG, so it was difficult uh, to show clearly. I'm sorry for that. ECG, what will be the answer to answer? Tachycardia and also white QRS. Yeah, the answer is all of the above. Oh, all of the above. Yeah, prominent R yeah. wave, AVR also. Okay. So all of the above. See, uh, many of the students will not give the answer all of the above. You know, they're afraid. They are afraid of giving all of the above because they think it might not be the answer all of the above. So most of the students will give answer of white QRS complex. Okay, in this question. Now the the candidate who answered tachycardia he will get a mark. Now, the candidate who answered a white QRS complex, he or she will also get a mark. And the third one will also get a mark, but the maximum marks will be taken by the all of the above because yeah. this exam is a percentile exam. So the candidate who take a best option because this is, it's the choose the best answer. Okay, yeah. so now, right. Yeah, so this is the last scenario, I guess. A five-year uh, child is recently diagnosed as a case of chronic renal failure. Strangely, a clinician did ECG for him. Looking at ECG, can you find out why it was done? It's a renal problem, chronic renal, and a physician did ECG. So it's, it was something strange, strange for a medical student who was looking at the reports of this child. So what do you think, what's abnormal in this ECG? Tell me one thing which is very, very prominent in this ECG. Tall T waves. Yeah, excellent. Tall. Yeah, excellent. It, it, it's a tent-like tall T waves, which is yeah. a sign of? Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. Yeah, hyperkalemia, very good. So the, you see the exam, it's not that difficult, but you need to concentrate on the stem. It's a CRF. The CRF patient will go to hyperkalemia. One of the complications is a hyperkalemia. So what you see in hyperkalemia, the most common one is the tent-like T waves. So this is a typical tent-like, the Arabian tent-like T waves. So this was everything. Thank you so much, all of you. It was just a brief sort of a discussion that what range of questions we can get uh, in uh, ECG and in uh, radiology. Of course, it, it, it's not everything, but at, at least it can give you uh, just a way that how to proceed. And I'm uh, ready to answer anyone who, who want to answer anything. So any question, Hello. Dr. Tahir's, uh, yes, any question about Dr. Tahir's lecture today or my Hello, lecture? What, what, what? Yes, please ask. Uh, so, Madam, what was the, the pattern on the lead to in that last ECG? Last ECG was hyperkalemia because hypocalcemia picture oh. is not so prominent. Yeah, yeah. Apart from what, what were the waves which are present on lead to?
What was the view? What is the your question? I did not get your question. Yeah. Sorry. Those waves of lead two. Dr. Tahir, yeah, you can answer. Uh, sorry, I, I, I did not get the question. Can you please uh, uh, repeat so, what sorry, you said? To ask that, uh, what was the pattern in the uh, lead two in that last ECG? Lead two, lead two. Lead they two. are asking lead two. Upright, yeah, it's upright. Yeah. I, I told you that there there can be other things in this uh, ECG, but the most important thing which which you are concerned with that is the tent like T waves, because this is a case of a CRF. You need to look for the signs which are related with the hyperkalemia, because this is a case of renal uh, chronic renal failure. So there might be potassium retention in this patient. So what you'll find in hyperkalemia, the most important is a tall T wave. So. So here is a tall T wave. There can be other things. Maybe this patient has other comorbid conditions. So forget that thing. We'll concentrate on what they are asking. Yeah. They will not, never give you uh, bipathology or tripathology. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yeah, they do not exactly. expect you. They do not expect you to identify bipathology or tripathology or quadripathology. This is the job of the cardiologist. But they want you to see that you have the knowledge to manage hyperkalemia because this is very dangerous. The child will have ventricular tachycardia and he will die if you do not identify this condition. So you have to manage the potassium. But even if there is hypocalcemia, some sort of, maybe. In the lead two, there is also tall T wave if you see, okay, and broad QRS complex. If you see, there is also broad QRS complex. So there may be other pathology in this child, but we are not supposed to concentrate on that. We are supposed to concentrate on the potassium level, okay, in this child, as okay. it is a scenario yeah. is given. Because sometimes, you know, they will not give you clear cut picture because these pictures are taken directly from the patient and the patient had some other comorbidities, as Dr. Tahir said. So maybe this child had also associated hypocalcemia because rickett is very common. We know that is, this is called renal rickett. So rickett is very common in uh, chronic renal failure. So they are not supposed to give you multiple pathology. You have to concentrate on single because this part one and part two exam, AKP and part one, they are actually, they are not specialist level exam. They are just register level. You have to manage the patient immediately. And then you can call your consultant because this patient will, will be seen by a nephrologist. Definitely he will be seen by a nephrologist. Okay. So I hope uh, this discussion uh, today we did one and a half hour almost. I hope this was important for you. And if you have any query about our session, our paid session, you can ask me in the group. This is our, uh, this is our contact number. Already our students are enrolled and batch is already started. We already, uh, I mean, started our activity in the batch. And uh, this session is recorded in the YouTube, okay? Uh, my YouTube channel is given in the group where you can contact me, I will give you the channel. Okay, this session is uh, playing on the YouTube because I try to help people because many people could not join. So I try to help those. So you can see later on this session. And also I will give you the PDF, both me and Dr. Tahir's PDF, I will give you in the groups. But the most important point is you have to practice a lot you have to know the tricks because today we tried to show you that even though the X-ray and ECG was not tough, but the answer were, were tough. In the DM, DEMSA scenario, you missed the DEMSA site. In the ECG scenario, you are confused. Is it hypocalcemia or hyperkalemia? So these things will happen in the exam hall. It will be confusing, okay? So study hard and be smart, okay? Take preparation smartly, okay? And if you want to join our session, I would like to uh, give you the contact number. This is the contact number in WhatsApp. You can contact me and also Dr. Tahir will be here with me. And if you have any question regarding AKP, you can also ask in the group. We have a group for AKP and also part one students. So any more comments today? We are about to finish our discussion. Yeah, anything you can ask regarding AKP, uh, we will more than pleased to help you.
And there is some question that there is classes about EEG and cardiac cath. Yes, there will be classes. Dr. Tai will take yes. EEG yes. and cardiac cath. I will be mostly taking the data classes. Uh, my, my, my topics are mainly data related questions and also the scenario based question. And Dr. Tai is mainly electrophysiological part I gave him because he is very good in that. And I am very good in, I think I'm very good in that scenario based question and also interpretation of data. So Dr. Tahir and me are uh, divided the classes and you can join. We'll be more than happy if you join. Even if you don't join, you can ask in the group. There's no uh, problem. You can ask in the group. We can. We will try to do more sessions after Ramadan uh, and uh, we will try to help you more. Okay, so I think Dr. Tahir, we can take now. Yeah, there, there, there is a question just someone posted that can we take AKP before that part one? Yes. You can take in any pattern. You, I, I did my AKP first uh, because I thought I'm very good in uh, cl clinical side and I thought I'm not good in the basic portion. So I took the uh, FOP and TAS later on. Uh, first I cleared uh, AKP, then I took the other one. So you can take uh, in any pattern you like. Uh, it's a good thing about the Royal College. Okay, another question is that how many classes? Okay, for these things, you have to ask me in the my number, WhatsApp number. I will give you my routine, class schedule, and also everything related with our uh, coaching, related with our tuition. And uh, just one minute, I'm giving you my YouTube channel uh, because someone is asked that, is this session recorded? Yes, this is recorded. Uh, so this is my YouTube channel. I am giving you in the chat box you can see in the chat box so you can join here and you can see many there are many live and there are many uh, activities in my channel especially for part one and akp you can see this channel and you can subscribe or you can watch sometime when you are free okay so i think it was helpful for you and inshallah uh, soon we will take another free lectures and also my batch is open uh, you can join our batches so uh, see you inshallah next time and until then keep studying keep praying for all of us and uh, don't get disheartened about the covid exams are going on by uh, in time okay there is no delay uh, uh, dr tamanna when is the next batch for akp starting this batch is starting in the may 18th okay next batch probably will be in october because our batch is around three and a half month okay so the october batch is preparing for the september exam uh, no, no, October, this batch is preparing for September exam, May batch. And October batch will be preparing for January or May exam because uh, actually every three monthly RCPCH is taking exam, but our course is three and a half month. So if you want to give exam in January, you have to uh, enroll in this batch, May batch, because okay. our uh, October batch will be finished in February. Okay. Okay, Dr. Tamanna. Thank you. I have one more doubt. Uh, yeah. uh, so after completing all the three MRCP, AKP exam, uh, what yeah. else should a doctor do to become a consultant there? And how many years it will take to become consultant? Yeah, that I already discussed in the first part. You can listen in the YouTube. Okay. But after passing all the parts of MRCPCH, you will be uh, work as a registrar. That is around four to five years, depend on your level. Some doctors, you know, they jump. They directly go from four, ST4, so ST5. So the duration of training depends on your skill, depends on your knowledge. We will go in UK and they will judge you. They will see your skills, okay? So it is not fixed for everyone. So maximum students needs four years. Okay, so after four years, and you have to make some portfolio, you know, e-portfolio. So after this e-portfolio, after your activity, after your training, everything depends, actually, depends on your situation. Okay, okay doctor, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any question? We are about to leave. Uh, so, okay, this is not closed, okay? This meeting is closed, but... You can ask in the group if you have any more queries regarding the AKP course or regarding the AKP preparation. Yeah, and Dr. Sidra, Dr. Sidra, you can ask, uh, then we will wind up. Yeah. And thank you so much, Dr. Tahir, for this wonderful session. Yeah, and soon you. we'll do another so. session for AKP. Thank you yeah, very inshallah. much. Inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.
ਬਾਏ ਬਾਏ